Praise the Lord, Church, and uh, welcome to our midweek Bible study. It's uh, wonderful to see everyone here. And this week we have Chelsea with us in the camera and manning the camera at the same time. So, um, firstly, I want to ask you if you can uh, if you can let us know if there's any technical things that need to be updated or anything like that. Um, please let us know that uh, so that we can update the technical side of things. This is all new kind of stuff that we're working with. And so, please keep us informed. Um, let's, I want to give you an opportunity to jump in the comments and just uh, let us know uh, how you're doing, where you're from, and uh, that'd be wonderful. And um, that way we can see um, what comments pop up as well. And then also, what we um, are going to do in our midweek Bible, so just like last week, is if there is, um, we have opportunity for questions, discussions, uh, I'd like your thoughts, things like that. And what I want you to do is comment um, below with your thoughts and things like that so that we can uh, still have that discussion-based um, type, type lesson uh, in the middle of the week. And so Chelsea will be keeping an eye on the comments. And then, uh, and then yeah, but uh, Chelsea wants to say hi to the church and greet the church um, church this evening. If you're seeing a spot on my shoulder, it's because we're sharing a microphone uh, tonight, so it's kind of in between, in between us. Well, praise the Lord, church. It's good to be here with whoever is watching, um, whether it be all over the world or just, you know, here in Alice Springs. So it's good to be here, good to be able to share God's word with you, and uh, just to be able to be in our houses even and to just be able to welcome God's presence by reading his word and just sharing it with you guys. Um, just God bless and I hope you enjoy <laughs> and follow along. So, and like you um, said, we'll, I'll probably even ask some questions, you know, if you don't. So <laughs> anyways, well, let's, um, we're going to, we're going to start out with Acts. We're going to go over Acts chapter six tonight, but before we go there, let's, uh, let's open this evening in prayer. Let's pray, church. God, we worship you. We praise you and we magnify you. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be exalted, God. And God, I pray that you would bless uh, this evening's Bible study, that you would have your way, God. And God, those, to everyone that is tuning in, I pray that your presence would be in their house, wherever they may be, God. And I pray that you would uh, speak to us, that you would minister to us through tonight's lesson, God. We worship you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. So as mentioned, uh, if you have any um, questions or thoughts throughout the, throughout the thing, just put it in a comment below, okay? And uh, we'll have opportunities to get to, get to those uh, while we're going over the scripture. The first question which I'm going to ask up first is, what is a disciple? So I want you to start typing your thoughts on that. What is a disciple or what makes a disciple? Acts chapter 6 verse 1 says, and in, those, and, in those days, and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily, uh, in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So what is a disciple? Any thoughts? Any questions? And Chelsea's going to read the questions or thoughts out. Molly, 
that's all right mentioning your name because she is commenting on here. (laughs) Everybody can see it. (laughs) She says, "A disciple is a discipline following Jesus Christ." Exactly. So, disciple comes from the root word discipline. So, just as Sister Molly said, comes from the root word discipline. Uh, which is kind of like almost borderline in today's culture, swearing, discipline. We don't like that word. It's, it's a word we, uh, we don't like, but it is to be a disciple is to be uh, disciplined. And so in here in the Bible, when we talk about disciples, we talk about people who are disciplined in their follow, in their pursuit of Christ. They are disciplined in that. What, uh, what I find interesting here is that in, in those days, um, if we read verse 1 again, and in those days when the, when the number of the disciples was multiplied. Many times when we think of disciples, we think, when we think of the disciples in the Bible, we think the 12 disciples, right? We think the 12. But here we're reading that the, they were multiplied. They were multiplied, the number of the disciples. So there's a lot more disciples going on uh, there's a lot more discipleship happening. Uh, any, any, any other thoughts or questions? The other thing I want to bring up here is we will see it a few times in this chapter. The word multiplied and the disciples being multiplied. What we see previous in ch- previously in the book of Acts, we see the disciples, um, we see that uh, added to the church daily. There were people added to the church daily. They had Pentecost, 3,000 were added to the church. But Jesus told the disciples to go teach and make disciples. Make disciples. So we see added to the church daily and we see the term here multiplied. The disciples multiplied. And so uh, we we see a bit of a, um, a differentiation between just adding to the church, but then people becoming uh, disciples. So there's now more than, there's not just the 12 disciples. And this is where the thing, where things start to, because the church is starting to multiply, starting to really grow, a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews uh, begins to rise because their widows were, were neglected in the daily administration. And so the 12 uh, call the multitude or call the multitude of the disciples together and they say, hey, we need to keep preaching the word. Verse 3 says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom, whom we may appoint over this business. Now, we think... And we're going to see the importance in this in a little bit. But the business that these, that these, seven, these seven disciples will be over is not less important than what the twelve are doing. It's different. The body of Christ, and if you have any thoughts or questions, pop it in the comments because we're going to, we're going to pause here for a moment in a second. But the body of Christ is made up of many members, uh, many, uh, many parts, all, all that, right? We, we know that that... And we each have different roles. It's not to say that one is less and one is more important and all this, but they're different. Everything is everything is just as just as important as the other, really. It, um, you know, you for a little while, um, many years ago, I had my pinky bandaged up, and as you know, I go to the gym and stuff and work there, and and it was a may well. Currently, I don't. But anyways, <laughs> but uh, it is amazing when when training how difficult it was with my pinky bandaged up and how much balance to everything I held that the pinky brought in. Just as the small part of the hand, but really important. Same can be said for the little toe. Any thoughts or comments or questions? Uh, we just have a few more tuning in. So okay. We have cool. greetings from Cairns. Ah. And it looks like Sydney. Sydney. Hey. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, Maybe, uh, so we are in Acts chapter 6 uh, this evening. So they're appointing seven uh, disciples. 
to take care of this ministry to the widows, to take care of this ministry, while the twelve continue the ministering of the word, not because one is more important than the other, but both need to be done. And we're going to see that here in a second. Do you have any thoughts, Chelsea? Um, only that we have a comment that says we are a body. We are a body, exactly. And we need to, we need to work in the role that God has placed us in because God has placed us there for a reason. Verse 4, let's continue on Acts chapter 6, verse 4 says, but we, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. That is the 12 speaking, the 12 disciples. Understanding there's a lot of disciples because of the, uh, there's a multitude of disciples now. Verse 5, and the saying pleased the whole multitude. This is the multitude of disciples. The whole multitude. And they chose Stephen. So now they're choosing the seven. They chose Stephen, a man full of, uh, full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and, uh, bear with me while I pronounce these, Prochorus, Prochorus and Nic Nicanor, Nicanor, <laughs> Nicanor, I think, and, and Timon, and Pumba, no, I'm joking, and Timon, <laughs> and, and Pioninus. And Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Verse 6. When they set before the apostles and went... Whom? Sorry. Whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. There wasn't a virus going around, so it was okay. Verse 7. <laughs> they laid their hands on them. Verse 7. And the word, and the word of God increased. This is what I want to point out here. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were, were obedient to the faith. So this is what I want to point out here. This is what I find really interesting here, is we oftentimes think, you know, okay, you've got the 12 disciples. And when we think of disciples in the Bible, that's sometimes all we think of, right? And so we've got the 12 disciples, but there's a multitude of disciples here. The church is growing. There's a need for more disciples to do more things other than just preach the gospel, other than just, other than just do things. But there's, there's daily tasks. The scripture refers to it, the daily ministration. There's daily tasks, that's in verse 1, that need to be done. And so they appoint seven. And sometimes we think, well, these seven are, are a bit lower. You know, they're, they're not with the twelve. They're a bit lower. But the scripture points out that after these seven have, have been appointed, and the word, verse seven, after the seven have been, point, been appointed, and the word of God increased, increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied again. Again, so now you've got people in ministry in positions where, where they may not be, uh, quote unquote, a part of the twelve. <laughs> they may not be a part of that, but they are in. Uh, they are in the role that the that the church that God has placed them in, and because they're in that role, because they're fulfilling the ministry that they are placed in, doing taking taking care of daily ministration and, and things like that, daily tasks, the, the number of the disciples multiply again and the word of God is increased. When we all do what God has called us to do, it's amazing how things, how things, just, how things just happen. One plants, one waters, God gives the increase. Any thoughts or questions, comments? Do we have any? No? If you just pop your thoughts or, or, or um, questions in there as we continue. And so I want to encourage you that, uh, before we continue on, I want to encourage you that no matter what your role is, uh, no matter what you are doing in the kingdom of God, it is a big, big part. Uh, so these, these disciples here are caring for the widows is how this all started right? How this issue all started. They're caring for the widows. They're taking care of daily tasks in ministry, things like that, that they're doing. And I had a professor, shout out to Professor Bolman uh, at Urshan College, who used to always say, he always said, 
people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm-hmm. And so the thing, the, the brothers and sisters, we need to, especially now, with everything that is happening, we need to share the love of God. We need to share the caring nature, the caring attitude uh, that God has towards people. Are we good to go on or is there any? Let's, okay, let's continue on. Verse, where are we at? Verse 8. Yes, verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, and full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. A continuation there is not a part of the quote unquote 12. Uh, did, did miracles and wonders uh, among the people. Verse 9. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called which is called the synagogue of the uh, Libertines. That is how that's pronounced, in case you're wondering. It could be Libertines, but it's, I believe it's pronounced Libertines. And Cyrenians, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing... With Stephen, so some of the synagogue, as we see in the book of Acts, miracles start happening, the disciples start multiplying, God's adding to the church daily, and who shows up but the synagogue, the Pharisees, and to, to create some trouble. And so, uh, verse 10, And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they sub- suborned. Then they suborned men, which said, "He hath heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God." So suborned there. That word just means they basically bribed. <laughs> okay. So they got. They set up some false witnesses. They bribed uh, some people to speak against. Say, we heard Stephen preaching blasphemies against Moses and against God. Uh, any thoughts or questions? So people were bribed to speak against Stephen. Verse 12. And they, and they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. Notice here one of the things that the that the Pharisees do that uh, the people that are of, oftentimes opposing the disciples and the and the church one of the things they do is they stir up the people, right? Mm. Um, my question is why 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 do they stir up the people? Any thoughts on why they may stir up uh, stir up the people and cause uh, just. Cause you know they've they've got the false witnesses that have given false witness against them, but then they go a step further and stir up people. Any thoughts or questions before I before I give my input? My thought is the reason why they stir up the people is because back then <laughs> the governments listened to the people, and you know that's kind of how they you know when Jesus was put on the cross. Pilate asked the people, yeah. you know, and the more the people are stirred up, even today, the more people are stirred up, you know, the more crazy things will get, and, uh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Any thoughts before I, any thoughts in the comments before I go on? So, exactly, so, two things there. The rulers of the day, the people in power of the day is the Roman Empire. There is basically one thing that the Romans could not stand. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the main things they just could not stand. And that was uh, not having peace in their cities. Not having peace in the cities that they occupied. They, they were, you know, they, they oftentimes went to war. They were okay with that. It wasn't in their cities that they occupied. But they demanded peace. In their cities, and so we see, we see with Jesus, as Chelsea mentioned, we see with with many times that the Pharisees stir up the people, 
to get the governors or to get the people in power involved. And also, as Chelsea just mentioned, with what's going on today, for example, oftentimes many people in these situations are misinformed. They don't really even know what's happening. They just see a crowd getting riled up and they're like, they get swept up in the emotion of it. Mm -hmm. Just like really the, the two most contagious things that I've said a few times now, one is fear and one is hope. And we can choose what we're going to spread. We can choose whether we spread fear or whether we spread hope to people. Mm. And so they stir up the people uh, to, get, to try and just get a bunch of attention uh, on, on the situation, on Stephen. And basically they say, much like they do the Apostle Paul later, they say, well, they're talking about Paul, they say, well, Paul is a disturber of the peace. Right? They're trying to do the same here for Stephen. Let's continue. We have some thoughts. Uh, Sister Morley just mentioned that they wanted to maybe change minds. Um, and then she also put, the squeaky wheel gets the most oil. There we go. So change minds and also uh, exactly and create confusion, mm. which can change people's minds about things. If there's confusion about stuff, mm -hmm. uh, it, it changes people's minds. We know that God is not the author of confusion, but it's interesting how, you know, one of the, the, the enemy's tactic is to get people so confused about the Bible, about, about all of this, and so they just, they just set it aside. When in reality, um, God's Word is quite simple if you spend a little bit of time studying it, right? And so, um, so exactly, it, it does help in changing people's minds, stirring up the crowd like that. Let's continue on. We're almost done. This, this isn't a long chapter this evening. Verse 13, And set up false witnesses which said, This man cease, ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against the holy, the holy place and the law. So now we've got people, we've had people saying Stephen's, set up that have been bribed saying Stephen's blaspheming against Moses, against God, and now against the holy place and against the law and the crowds getting stirred up and riled up. Verse 14, For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall, and shall, change, and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. Now, Jesus said... I will, uh, the temple will be destroyed and in three days risen up again. And they're like, man, he's talking about the literal, the building, you know, and, and Stephen saying that the built, you know, Stephen saying that he's going to, he's going to destroy the, the temple and, uh, and change the customs that Moses gave us. He's going to destroy that. But Jesus is really talking. We know that our bodies are the temple. Uh, we know that we are the temple, and Jesus is talking about himself when when he gets crucified, he will raise again and then the preachers of the time, the disciples of the time would be saying, "You know Jesus said that you you 'll destroy the temple, and in three days I will raise again, meaning that talking about jesus 's resurrection on the third day let's let 's uh finish off here verse fifteen, and all that set in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Interesting there. Interesting there. And uh, w chapter seven, we go into we go into Stephen's um, Stephen's time at the council, and my what a powerful what a powerful message he really preaches there. But um. His face is seen as an angel here. Really, the way I see this final verse, and I'm going to ask you for your final thoughts or comments or questions in the comments section. Uh, really, the way I see this final verse here is God allowing the people in the council to see the face of Stephen as though it's the face of an angel, giving them an opportunity to realize that God is with Stephen, that God is with, uh, with these disciples. Uh, as we read uh, last week, 
uh, in chapter 5, Gamaliel said, you can try and stop this thing. If it's of man, it will, it will die out. It will finish out. But if it is of God, there is nothing you can do to stop it. And so, and so here I really see it as an opportunity for the council to have their eyes opened to realize what is happening here, that God is involved with Stephen, with the disciples. And so our points here tonight, and we'll go to the comments in a section in, in, a, in a second, but our points here tonight is there's a multitude of disciples. We, there's not just the 12 disciples. They are part of the, the, they're part of the disciples, but there's a multitude of disciples here uh, at this time in the book of Acts, and they're multiplying. We read earlier that added to the church, there's people added to the church daily, and now the disciples are being multiplied, and they're being put into ministry positions uh, around the church, uh, fulfilling daily tasks. And as the disciples fulfill the tasks that they have, it's our second point, as the disciples fulfill the tasks that God has put them in, then the church continues to grow. More disciples are added to the church and mo- the disciples continue to multiply. Okay, And so I encourage you with those two points that whatever role God has placed you in, whatever position God has placed you in, no matter what it may be within the church, to continue steadfastly in that position, to continue going in that position, because it has an impact, it has a role, uh, it has an impact, and it has a role in growing the church. And then thirdly, is, is, the, is the, um, the final point here, where the enemy will try to stir up confusion. The enemy will try to st- stir up confusion, stir up, the crowd stir up fear, which we're seeing a lot in the world at the moment. Um, stir up all these things uh, to try and, as Sister Molly mentioned, change people's minds, to try and create a bunch of confusion about things. But the chapter finishes with people, with the council seeing Stephen's face as though they saw an angel, letting us know that God is always going to be with us, no matter what situation we may face. God will be with us. Stephen didn't back down. He didn't he, he didn't back down. He was he continued to preach and he continued to stand for what he believed in. And uh, when we do that, when we stand for God, God will stand for us. Praise God. Any final thoughts or questions? Um well kind of going back to verse fourteen, um, where it talks about have we heard him say that this Jesus and now this will destroy this place? Um, Sister Molly mentions, didn't they know the Old Testament and what was said about the Messiah? Um, that be blinded, you know, like a hearts hardened type thing. Yep. Is that what it's more, what we're That's... seeing in this part? Because they, they should have known about the Old Testament and yet, where are we seeing that their hearts were hardened and... Um, Another thing she says, you can keep all this in your head. <laughs> Verse 11, talking of Moses. Yep. Um, didn't Moses make all those rules because of the uh, stupidity of the people? Maybe another word, word would be better there. Um, no, simplicity even, you know, maybe. Simplicity of the people. Um so one one thing. So let's go to verse fourteen. Let's um discuss that. Then we'll go to verse eleven. Verse fourteen. Uh, very much the case that their eyes were um were blinded. Uh, that being said, that being said, we still have a we have a free will, and we have a choice, and sometimes um and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this and then give you an give an example sometimes we get so riled up about something that we don't want to see anything else and the pharisees were ha- since since Jesus have been so riled up and in knots about this that really their eyes are blinded that they do not see anything else and if Gamaliel 
he was able to stand back for a section. And in portions, we see where they're able to stand back for a section, just like, uh, I believe it was last week or the week before, where they, they see them, and they see that they're unlearned and ignorant men, but they realize they've been with Jesus. Mom there's moments where they, where they see, uh, see beyond their blindness, if I can put it that way. They see beyond uh, what kind of what the saying when the red mist falls on someone and they Have just they just they they just go crazy right and they're in their tunnel vision and they're and they're riled up and so yes yes they have been blinded but yes that is also partially brought on by themselves i'll give you an example who's ever been in an argument right with someone and uh I've been in arguments, or we'll say disagreements, okay? Been in disagreements where the heart rate goes, flies, flies really high, and then like one hour later, you're like, man, I wish I'd said this. <laughs> this would have been a really good comeback. This would have been a really good something to say, right? I wish I'd said it. What's happened is, literally, when our heart rate reach a, reaches 100 beats or higher, there's a portion in our mind that closes off that helps us reason, that helps us construct sentences and put things together. This is where when you're having a discussion about the Bible with someone who uh, is just being blatantly, um, you know, disrespectful or, 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 you know, disrespectful or just, just, really upsetting you about the scripture, about things like that. This is where it is important to just keep the heart rate low and allow the mind to continue to operate. Keep it under that 100, even, even 90 beats a minute. Allow the mind to continue to operate. And that's kind of what's happening here is they are so... Uh, they're so focused and so upset, so riled up that, they're, that they can't see anything else. And so, yes, they are blinded, but yes, they also still have, they still make the choices that they make. They still make the decisions that they make. They still go through with stoning Stephen. They still go through with crucifying Jesus. Um, you know, they still rile up the people. They still put the disciples into prison. They make these choices. Uh, still, rather than, as Gamaliel said, Let's just see what happens. If it's of man, it'll die out. If it's of God, yeah, it's, it's not going to. Um, and then verse 11, with uh, Moses, blasphemy against Moses, and then, and then also it's brought up again that he wants to change the customs, you know, um, the, the customs that were put in place by Moses. And the truth is, is with Jesus, things did change. Uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, praise God! Yeah. Your pastor doesn't have to. Uh, <laughs> your pastor doesn't have to kill a lamb anymore and then pass out every time because <laughs> I can't handle blood. Okay, so so praise God. And so things did change, but they didn't want them to change. They liked the positions they were in. They liked the things that the positions they held. The quote unquote respect of the people that they had. And so here. Um, in the Old Testament, the laws were put in place and things were put in place as God is creating this nation, the nation of Israel, for one purpose, really. And that is a nation where baby Jesus can be born in Bethlehem. He can manifest himself in, in Jesus. God can come manifest to the earth uh, as a human, walk among us, Emmanuel, God with us, and change, and really change things from the way they're done in the Old Testament to the New Covenant, the New Testament. And so, it is really, when they say he's wanting to change the customs that Moses put in place, um, I'd say, yeah, he is, <laughs> basically. Um, and, you know, people don't like change, but praise God for the New Testament. Praise God for the New Covenant relationship uh, with that we have with God. Uh, 
I hope that helps. Um, I hope that helps kind of, you know, think about things a little differently in re in regards with those couple things there. Uh, any, if you have any, any other questions or comments? Uh, Sister Molly just mentioned change can be difficult. It can be. And as I say, if you don't like change, um, and uh, if you don't like change, just let me sneak into your house five mornings of the week uh, and move your coffee pot around. Uh, and if you say you do like change, just let me sneak in and move your coffee machine to a different place each morning, and we'll see how quickly you like the change then. Um, but, uh, you know, most of us are reluctant to change. Um, that's one of the things that's been so hard with everything going on is the changes. It's changing every day. Um, every day is, there's things changing, there's new things happening and we're having to adapt, we're having to change with it. And so change is difficult, uh, but it is, it is a part of life. Mm. Uh, so I just go over the things again and I want to encourage you uh, that there's disciples being multiplied here and God has called us to make disciples. God has called us to make disciples. Disciples are multiplied here. There's not just the 12 disciples, but there's disciples in many different roles uh, fulfilling what God has called them to do. And we see when they're fulfilling those roles that the church continues to grow. And so I encourage you, whatever position, whatever place God has placed you, to fulfill that role uh, because God will use it God will use uh, you in that position, in that role, working with the body of Christ to grow the church and to spread the gospel uh, to those. People want to know how much you care before they, want, before they want to know how much you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the enemy will attack and try and create confusion, spread fear, as we're seeing, and try to create just that confusion in people's minds about things. It is our job to make things very clear with people. Uh, the Bible is very black and white. It is very clear in its instructions and its directions. And so it is our job to make that very clear to people. But if there's any more thoughts or questions, no, you have any thoughts, final thoughts? Well, I just wanted to hit on the last verse in my apostolic study Bible. Praise I'm God. so thankful that I have. <laughs> um, the... Uh, um, little bit that they put in here for verse 15 <clears throat> when it talks about how um, they saw his face as it had been the face of an angel and in here they say in the face of numerous accusers Stephen was endowed with the gift of peace his countenance radiated the presence of God the wording evokes the glowing countenance of Moses when he returned from Mount Sinai as well as Jesus' transfiguration. And I think that's just a beautiful thing that, you know, even today we're faced mm. with numerous um, difficulties. Um, but if we continue to stay steadfast in God's Word and just continuing to connect with Him, we may not be able to connect with people like we used to, you know. Um, but that's change. <laughs> and it'll change back soon, I know. Um, but... The fact that, you know, during that, um, his, he was endowed with the gift of peace. Yeah. And that's what God can give us mm. through this time, through this Bible study, through mm. being at home, you know, quarantined from the rest of the world. We can have that peace. And I'm just thankful for that. And that's yeah, yeah beautiful exactly. thing. Exactly. It's, um, yeah, the word peace there and... and what Chelsea mentioned, which really stuck out to me, was uh, the peace, and that's what they saw, the countenance and the peace that he had in the middle of the chaotic crowd, in the middle of everything being riled up, he had that peace, and it was a witness to the council members, it was a witness to those around him. And so, brothers and sisters, you know, you can say, hey, I've been, I've been you know, people know that you've been stood down from your job, or you've lost your income, or you've lost this or that in, in, in everything that we're facing with the virus, and yet the peace, and yet you're smiling, and yet you're, you're, you're attending church online, and yet you're studying the Word, and yet you, people ask how you're doing, you say, praise God, I'm doing good, God is good, He's still on the throne, 
and, and that peace and that countenance uh, is a witness to people. I, you know, I just I went into where I, where I was working before I got stood down uh, just earlier this week, and they said they said, "Oh, how 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 are you doing?" I said, "I'm I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Things things are good. God is good." And they were shocked. They were surprised. They were like, "No, things are not good. Things are terrible." Things are really bad, and I'm like, well, I know I know who holds the future. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I I I know it's gonna be okay. Um, I mean, somebody said I was talking with somebody the other day. They said, "What's the worst that can happen? We die, and then we go to heaven. <laughs> Is that really the worst <laughs> thing that can happen? Yeah, I don't know because heaven, you know, I mean, pretty good." Pretty good stuff. So, mm. so praise God. Mm. But um, but let's um. Yeah. Don't want to miss out on this comment, um, but it says, Sister Molly mentioned, chapter seventeen of Acts, verse eleven. Um, we need to check the scriptures daily, as Acts seventeen eleven says about the Barians being more noble. Yeah. yeah. And that's so true, that we need to check the scriptures. Exactly. And it's just a matter of getting in God's Word. Exactly. I encourage you during this time to, if you're going to watch the news, read the Bible every day. Zig Ziglar used to say, uh, I read the newspaper and the Bible so I know what both sides are doing. Okay? So if you're going to watch the news, read the Bible so you know what both sides are doing. Uh, <laughs> because you can just get down and depressed. And, uh, you know, the Bereans, as, as Sister Molly pointed out, they studied the Word, they checked it, they read it, daily and they studied to make sure it was accurate what was being preached to them what was being taught to them and they studied it for themselves each day i want to close in prayer tonight and i want to um pray for that god would just be with us and that really his peace uh, i just that final point that was brought up by sister chelsea um the peace that passes understanding i want god's peace to saturate us in this time so that it can be a witness, not just so that we feel good, but just so that it can be a witness to those that are around us, to those that we come in contact. Let's pray together, church. God, we worship you. We praise you and we magnify you. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be exalted, God. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one that compares or comes close to you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, uh, uh, for your scripture that leads us and guides us. It is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, God. Thank you, God, that we're able to spend this time online studying, that we're able to spend this time discussing, God. And, God, I pray that as we go through the remain remainder of this week, God, I pray that you would uh, be with us. I don't know where everybody is and what they're facing, God, but I pray that your peace that passes all understanding would saturate them, God, that your peace would saturate each person, God, that it would, uh, would be a witness to those that are around us, your peace, God, that passes all understanding, that in the middle of the storm, everything can be okay, that in the middle of the storm, we can, we can have a smile and be a witness to those that are around about us, God. I pray that you would uh, be in each household tonight, God. We worship you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining us uh, here. If you want to learn more about the church, the link is in the description above. Um, please let us know if there was any technical issues with uh, what, ha what we're doing tonight. Um, I know we are, we're trying new things and sometimes the internet may be a bit uh, in or out. We've got some rain and stuff happening here. And so some things can be happening uh, that could cause some glitches in the system. Um, also, I want to let you know that this recording will go on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe there. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, jump on there. The recordings are on there. And our YouTube videos are also on our website. Share the YouTube videos with people that may not have Facebook um, so, that they can, so that they can keep in touch, keep in uh, connection with what God is doing. But God bless you, and uh, have a wonderful evening, and have a wonderful uh, rest of the week. God bless. Take care.